friends today we'll be studying about the conventional methods of irrigation by the word conventional we mean olden methods or methods that have now become outdated and these include chadav charsa persian wheel carriers inundation canals and tank irrigation now let's look at briefly what is the definition of irrigation irrigation means supplying water to the land by artificial means this usually happens you know when uh, the rain water is not sufficient so you have to supply water artificially to irrigate the land and to grow crops so for that let's look at the proper definition irrigation is the artificial application of water to the soil through various systems of tubes pumps and sprays irrigation is usually used in areas where rainfall is irregular or dry times or drought is expected there are many types of irrigation systems in which water is supplied to the entire field uniformly now let us look at the different systems now shadav is the first system that we'll be discussing shadav is also spelled as shadu okay so it's the same thing shadav or shadu it is a hand operated device which is used for lifting water this device was invented in ancient times but it is still used in india and egypt and also in some other countries to irrigate the land now what happens in shadav shadav basically consists of a horizontal pole okay i'll be showing you the entire picture so you don't have to worry about it it this will make your concept completely clear for now just concentrate on the explanation so it uh, shadav consists of a long horizontal pole and uh, which is used to draw water out from a well river or a canal now this is done with the help of a bucket and that bucket is attached to the horizontal pole and onto the longer end of the horizontal pole whereas a weight is attached to the shorter end of the pole this method is used to irrigate only a small area of the land and it is rarely used today right so look at this picture this will make your uh, concept completely clear so here you know multiple uh, buckets are uh, used maybe because of the you know need of the water so <clears throat> see the wells are at, uh, buckets are attached onto the longer end of the pole and on the shorter end of the pole we see the weights attached right these are the weights again this picture will make it even more clear see this is the horizontal pole and the bucket is attached to the longer end the counterweight is attached here so the weight will help you to draw out water from the well here again the same thing it's the counterweight this is the rope which is attaching the bucket to the pole and this is the pole itself so the counterweight is helping to draw out water from the well with very little manpower now moving on to the next method this is called as charsa in charsa instead of a counterweight an animal power is used you just have to remember that the difference between charsa and shadav so the animal power is used to draw out water from the well and animal is tied to one end of the rope and the bucket is tied to the other end of the rope and it's not used by the farmers these days so here the picture is so you can see uh, an animal which is attached to the one end of the rope and the bucket is attached to the other the bucket is drawing out water from the well here again see look at the picture there is the animal and the bucket the bucket is drawing out water from the well and the animal as it moves forward the bucket comes out very easily now moving on to the third method which is very important why am i saying it's very important because from your exam point of view you get a diagram or a picture drawn and then you are asked to identify the method that is being used and uh, in the picture you have to explain the method being used and sometimes you know there is a small diagram also given and you are asked to label the parts so here i'll be showing you the uh, diagram and i'll be uh, telling you you know what are the different parts of this carrier system so the entire installation of this system is a lengthy procedure and uh, this consists of a horizontal underground canal and it's dug in the foothills this canal is dug in the foothills of the mountains and it is a horizontal canal by horizontal we mean you know a straight line like that not vertical it is horizontal see here this is a horizontal canal that is dug right now what happens to this horizontal canal it is being dug by a group of people who then share the water so you know multiple people they dig it together and then they share the water also and the canal may be several kilometers long 
what is this canal doing it is bringing water to the surface it is bringing the underground water to the surface look here this is the underground water water table so this canal which is being dug this horizontal canal you know it's drawing out water from here and it's bringing it to the surface this water was under the surface this is the surface area see this is the slant you can can you see the slant area this is the surface area so this uh, canal is bringing this underground water out so the water comes out here at the foothill of the mountain next vertical shafts are also dug to help prevent any blockage in the form of water flow or you know for repair see uh, since this canal is an underground canal so something if if, the, if there's an obstruction or you know if there is a damage to the canal how will that be repaired to repair it or to get rid of an, any obstruction vertical shafts are dug this way right so these are the vertical shafts that are dug so that any kind of an obstruction or repair can be easily done then uh, this system is practiced in baluchistan as water is very scarce there and evaporation rate is very high and underground canal minimizes evaporation so we already know that if the water is exposed to the environment the rate of evaporation will be higher but in this case we see this is that this is an underground canal meaning it's not completely exposed to the environment so the rate of evaporation will be less which is very ideal for the uh, conditions that are prevalent in baluchistan where there's a scarcity of water and uh, you know it's dry the weather is very dry there so you see these are the different paths that you should be knowing um, because you know you'll be asked to label them so this is the bedrock okay and this is the water table from where the water is being drawn out and this is the appearance or the outlet outlet from where the water appears and this is the mother well which is dug to identify you know where the water actually is and these are the shafts or the multiple vertical shafts you can also call them as maintenance shafts okay um, so that uh, uh, you know whatever uh, problem is you know that can be rectified then this is the ground surface the surface here this is the ground surface these are the fields that's it so there's not it's not very difficult but you need to understand this now let's talk about the Persian wheel this is another method which was used for irrigating comparatively larger area Persian wheel is also very important because I have seen it multiple times being asked so you have to learn this thoroughly and now what happens in the Persian wheel in uh, this method this method is powered by a blind folded bullock now there are two wheels there is a horizontal wheel and there is a vertical wheel as well the horizontal wheel is geared to a vertical wheel at the end of the shaft and a chain of earthenware pots are attached to the vertical wheel right so let's look at the picture first so that you don't get confused so see this is the horizontal wheel and this is the vertical wheel at the background this horizontal wheel is basically tied to the blindfolded bullock and uh, the vertical wheel uh, on the vertical wheel are attached you know earthenware pots like this these buckets will draw out water when they go down they will draw out water from the well and when they come up they'll spill the water into um, you know channels or canals these channels or canals will take the water to the nearby fields for irrigation so that's it it's a very simple method of irrigation you have to remember that there are two wheels horizontal wheel and a vertical wheel the horizontal wheel is tied to the animal and the vertical wheel carries these earthenware pots and then um, as these pots move down they bring out water and they spill it into uh, the channel which then takes water to the nearby fields and uh, uh, yeah so that's it now moving on to the next method inundation canals these are again long canals which are taken off from large rivers they receive water only when the river is full or when uh, it's flooding so this means that inundation canals are not full of water throughout the year because they are not drawn from uh, the barrages or from dams but they are attached to long canals taken off from the rivers a smaller version of an inundation canal is called as a diversion channel okay and this diversion channel is basically used to divert water into small fields again used for irrigation finally the last method of conventional irrigation was tank irrigation mud banks were built across the small streams 
and uh, these uh, mud banks were used to collect water, excess water during the rain. So they acted as a reservoir. If you look at the picture here, see these are the mud banks, and uh, you know they became you know small reservoirs of water once the rain ended, and then this water could be used for irrigation later on. So this was it. These were all the methods that um, uh, you know are called as the conventional methods, which were used for irrigation earlier. And out of all these methods, carriage and Persian wheel are very important. So you have to understand them and learn them thoroughly. And whenever you study these methods, you have to learn them with their picture because you know in the exams you'll be getting a picture or a diagram drawn, and you'll have to identify which method is being used and also explain that method. Okay, so this was it for today. I hope this uh, video was beneficial to you. And if it was, please give me a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't uh, as yet. Uh, so for now, I'm Nida Umar signing off. Take care of yourselves and also of the ones around you. Bye-bye.